Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, the pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. Before I get started with talking about finals, um, this came up, and normally I'm already logged into my Audible, so I don't see things like this, but there's an offer with Audible now for 99 cents a month for the first three months, so I think you would get a book each of those months. So if you're looking to get some pharmacology books for relatively inexpensively, uh, and then you also get all of the Discover Audible, or the Audible Plus stuff, I think, uh, that comes along with it. I'm not sure, uh, but I do know because I, I'm a member, so I don't know what somebody who's a new member gets. Uh, but I can tell you that 99 cents a month is a pretty good deal for the first three months, and it says you can cancel any time. Uh, but this ends on May 1st. So um, the way to get to it is just uh, go to memorizingpharm.com, and just you can just click on the Memorizing Pharmacology book there, uh, or there's all of the uh, other books if you go under the Books tab. Um, so either way, uh, that, that works really well. So again, um, uh, the class is a third full for uh, summer pharmacology, but if you want to schedule classes, uh, you can find that here. That's the like pharmacology pharmacology class. Um, there's a syllabus here if that's something that you need. Uh, and then I've started recording the OER nursing textbook. And then if you've got pronunciations for you or your students, I know a lot of uh, um, teachers and instructors use this uh, website, memorizingfarm.com. And then if you need like just a, a refresher class, uh, there's a teachable course that's under online classes if that's something you want. Um, it's I, I can give you the actual uh, thing for it. It's residency.teachable.com. Uh, and then... For the uh, self-paced pharmacology class with the quizzes, it's forward slash P forward slash M-O-B-I-L-E forward slash mobile. So again, that's if you just want to like a review rather than uh, the class class. But what I want to go into today is um, what to do in finals. Uh, I know that it's a bit frustrating that maybe you're on the bubble or maybe you're just behind. And here you have maybe a couple of days or maybe a week or something like that, and you need some fast advice. So that's what I want to give you today. And uh, I've already read this book. I'm not asking you to read an entire book uh, just before you start finals, but it will help you uh, in the future if you're like in Farm 1 and there's a Farm 2 coming up or maybe Pathophys or, or whatever it is. But one of my favorite um, books uh, is Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. And um, this website, retrievalpractice.org forward slash make hyphen it hyphen stick, uh, gives you a great summary of each of the, um, uh, the chapters. And I'm going to go through it now with you uh, as a way to let you know what you can do right now uh, if you've got finals week uh, as we're going. So the first chapter is really that learning is misunderstood and that when you keep rereading something you're not actually learning it as much as you think you're learning it and that's kind of their premise is that a number of or the majority of the techniques that students use now are the ones that are actually the least effective which is the last thing you want to hear right but what we want to know is well if rereading is not the what I need to do, then what do I need to do? So the second chapter goes into to learn retrieve, where what you really want to do is you want to try to remember it. Okay, and you're like, well, duh, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, no, it, it means something a little bit different. It's <clears throat> trying to remember it when you um, you know, haven't had it for a little while. So let's say you go over a couple of cards and then you try to remember it then. Like, you know, how? what are the ones I can remember? What are the ones I can't? Is there a mnemonic or a memory device that I can use 
um, to get better. And that's what the whole memorizing pharmacology book is, is not just here's some mnemonics for 200 drugs, but here's the way that you do it. And usually you want to put a couple of drugs together that are very similar. And you want to be able to say, okay, well, I need to retrieve the difference between a non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker and a dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. Okay, the non-dihydropyridines, okay, those are the ones that are diltiazem and verapamil, and those affect the heart and vasodilate versus the dihydropyridines, which only vasodilate. So when it comes to adverse effects, I'm going to possibly get bradycardia with the one, but I'm actually going to possibly get reflex tachycardia with the other. And that kind of is what I mean when I say to learn retrieve, going through those little things and going through them one piece at a time. Okay. Um, the next one is mix up your practice. And uh, the example they gave in the book was if you just keep hitting fastballs, you'll hit a fastball if, really well. If you keep hitting curveballs, you'll hit curveball well. But if you only practice fastballs and then you only practice curveballs and you don't mix them up, then you're going to not be as good as you could have been if you had mixed it up. Like you have no idea what's coming. Is it a fastball, a curveball, and so forth? And you know this from mixing up your three by five cards and things like that where you're like, okay, well, if I mix it up, then it's going to be a lot, you know, it's going to feel harder. But when you get to the test, which is a bunch of mixed up questions, then it actually works out quite a bit better. Okay. Um, chapter four, embracing difficulties. And this is where making mistakes is a good thing. And one of the toughest things, and, and it's really unfortunate, um, Back in the day, uh, when I was going to school, there was no problem with a professor asking, you know, someone to, you know, calling the person's name and seeing if they knew it and if they didn't, and it would help people get prepared. Uh, there's a great uh, movie, and it's actually based on a book um, about a kid who went to law school at Harvard, and uh, they use their um, they use the Socratic method where you just keep asking questions until the person finally makes a mistake or can't continue, which in this kind of environment would be thought of as absolutely cruel, or at least in the undergraduate classroom. But what it does is it really helps someone get prepared for class and it helps you keep thinking, well, then what next? And then what next? So embrace difficulties means that if your studying was hard, then your testing is easy. If your studying was easy, then your testing is likely going to be hard. And I think that that's an important thing to know. Uh, avoid illusions of knowing. So if you keep rereading and you're like, oh, I really know this stuff. I Well, you really know that this topic is on page 56 and that topic is on page 58. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you really know it. So what you want to do is you want to kind of have that, you know, flashcard triple pile where the, you know, you kind of go through the first one and the ones you know, you put in one pile and the ones you don't know, you put in the next pile. Then you kind of go through the ones you don't know again and so forth. And this illusion of knowing is where the trouble comes in because it's, if you've ever said, I don't understand, I felt like I knew it, I studied so hard, this is exactly what it is, is that you've gotten really good at seeing things in a certain order in a certain place, but you haven't necessarily experienced the difficulty of, okay, well, what's it going to be like when I see something that's similar but not the same in a different order? And that's really what this was about. Um, get beyond learning styles. And this is more saying that, you know, there's no visual learner, there's no auditory learner, there's no kinesthetic learner. And I tend to disagree with this one in that I really enjoy kinesthetic. So when it came to the labs, those are my favorite. And, you know, that's what I do for a living. You know, I'm teaching in, in lab-based courses. Uh, and, and for the most part, there's some others that aren't, but they're lecture-based. But you can still do activities. And so even in my lecture class, we're doing activities half the class. Like, it's 
you know, you're talking to each other, you're you're doing something rather than, okay, here, I'm going to tell you I'm the expert, and then you tell me that you knew it. Uh, and I think that for me, you know, being able to touch it, feel it, and all that stuff is a big deal. And for others, that whole visual learning thing is where I can just see it again if I made it in such a way that was interesting. And then other people really need to hear it. And if they hear it, then they can remember it a lot better. So I get that you would say that, okay, well, there, there's no real preference or your brain doesn't learn in these ways. But I think there's a real preference that if you get to do the learning in the way that you like, then I think you're more eager to get to it. So I was never like super excited about going to lecture. And I honestly, I was many times worried about falling asleep. Whereas with lab, I was always pretty excited to go and, uh, you know, be in a group and, and kind of conquer things together. Uh, chapter seven, increase your abilities. Um, that's where we're really saying that, um, instead of worrying about the outcome, I get that you are worried about the outcome of the final exam. But what it's saying is instead of worrying, this is, I guess the soccer analogy would be a little bit better. Uh, my kids are in, some of them are in travel soccer where it's like super tough teams. Like we'll drive two hours to, to go to a, play a team and then drive another four hours to play another team and we'll lose both games. We won't score a single goal. And if you're with an outcome mindset here, then you're like, okay, well, I keep losing. I must not be a good soccer player. And what we really want to do is we want to focus on, did we, did we play good soccer? And the same thing is true here. Did I prepare in a good way? Did I, um, you know, create an environment that's a really, you know, make it easy for me to study? Uh, it, did I, you know, study a couple of times rather than just trying to do it all before the test and those types of things. So again, increase your ability is having that growth mindset where, yeah, there's going to be some stumbles and things like that, but uh, you can definitely get a lot better. And then the last one was the tips for, you know, the teachers, students, and trainers where you kind of, um, uh, it was just kind of a, a bunch of, of different kind of things that can really help you. And if I were to tell you like the one thing you need to really do uh, to, to get better and within a very small period of time is you need to teach it to somebody. And I know that sounds strange. You're like, I'm not even passing the class. Who would want me to teach them? And I would argue that you might not be passing the class because of that, because you felt that you were less than and you felt that you didn't have something to contribute and that you would be embarrassed if somebody else knew how little you knew. And it's really the other way around, um, where the more you share it, the more you teach, even if it's not a person, it can be a dog or a cat or a fish or whatever pet you have. But our brains, when we teach something and we try to help somebody, it says, okay, this is important. I'm going to remember it. When I just look at something and here's, and I see words on a three by five, and then I see more words on a three by five, and then I see more words on a three by five, I, my brain says, okay, well, I remember there were three three by five cards and I remember there were words on them. I don't remember what the words were, but I remember the words. However, if I were to maybe order those three cards in a certain way, and I would say, okay, well, this is how I'm going to teach this one, and this one I would teach a little bit differently, and this one I would teach even more differently than that. And it's a great thing that, you know, by sharing, you're rewarded for it. But my kind of big overarching recommendation is that you at your final exam, should you be really you trying to teach the class, which might be your cat, dog, or fish, uh, what you've learned. And in doing that, you're going to find that it really is going to be really helpful. And it's a lot easier with a person because a person's like, oh, I didn't really get what you were saying. And then you have to figure out how to say it a different way. Then you really remember it. And it's the same as you know, you go and you mess up somebody's name, like let's say the person's name was Diane and you say Denise or something like that. 
you never forget Diane's name again, right? You're like, I can't, I can try to forget it and I can't because I can't forget the incident where I forgot that person's name. And so as you're trying to teach it, you're like, oh my gosh, how could I forget that, you know, in the middle of class? Now I'm definitely going to remember it. So your brain works a little bit differently than you expect. Uh, I know that the easy quotation fingers thing to do between now and end of term is just say, okay, I'm just going to and do my best with these note cards and, and pray. But I assure you, <coughs> if you take some time with the audiobook, especially, you know, if, especially in the first section where it kind of tells you how to do it, and then maybe kind of pick those areas like cardio or neuro that are the most difficult for you, I assure you those couple hours will be well spent. And the nice thing is because it's all audiobooks, uh, that you can kind of do it on the way to class as you're kind of walking around, as you're getting some exercise, some sunshine, rather than just trying to put yourself in a cubby or corral and, and just kind of study until your brain just won't go anymore. So I'm, I'm excited about this. It's really cool that uh, Audible's doing that. So 99 cents a month. Um, and then if you want to take pharmacology with me, it's memorizingpharm.com, whether it's the... Um, you know, just refresh your class or you want to actually be in class with me online, it's completely asynchronous uh, where you, you don't have to be there at a specific time. Uh, and um, again, community college prices. Uh, so uh, it should be reasonable. It does tend to fill up after the semester because unfortunately there are many students uh, across the country that maybe don't do as well as they needed to in, in pharmacology and uh, the school just doesn't offer f summer farm. And uh, we've had a lot of success with that. Or a lot of people uh, will take farm because they're going to be a physician assistant or because there's 16% of the NAPLEXs or the NCLEXs pharmacology. But if you only had, you know, three or six credits, uh, you're nowhere near that 16%, right? You would have to have, you know, 16% of 120 credits is close to 20 credits. Uh, and you know that you haven't had that much pharmacology. That's another reason people take it. So I uh, got questions for me, Tony, the pharmacist at gmail.com. Otherwise, good luck in finals week. And hopefully I'll get back on the horse here with uh, the recordings and things. Um, many people have used the recordings we've already had for the podcast, but uh, hopefully this summer I'll be able to get some more uh, stuff out there for you. Some great mnemonics. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.